Hey everybody, how does love work? It's a really interesting question that's explored in many of the relationship books, many of the spiritual books, and many of the communication books that I've read over the years. So I wanna read a few points to get you thinking about what is love truly for us as humans, for us as mammals, and what does it mean for us in a partnership or a potential partnership in the future? First, let's run the show reel. Okay, I love this quote out of the book, Hold Me Tight by Dr. Sue Johnson. Listen to this. To achieve a lasting bond, we have to be able to tune into our deepest needs and longings and translate them into clear signals that'll help our lovers respond to us. We have to be able to accept love and to reciprocate. Above all, we have to recognize and accept the primal code of attachment rather than attempting to dismiss and bypass it. In many love relationships, attachment needs and fears are hidden agendas, directing the action, but never being acknowledged. It's time to acknowledge these agendas so we can actively shape the love we need so bad. One of the challenges I see in relationship communication is we get taught how to communicate really clearly, but clear talking, clear expression of ideas doesn't always get our emotional and need for connection met. It doesn't always make us feel bonded, connected, and secure with our significant other, which is what we're really looking for in a relationship. Just like children, we need to be securely attached to our partner. And then she speaks about fears being hidden agendas. And I don't think it's that we're trying to hide our fears. From my experience working with clients, usually fears are not even known to us. Like our deepest fear, oh, the Marianne Williamson quote now just popped in my head. <laughs> No, I forgot what I was going to say. Our deepest fears aren't always obvious to us because often we don't even know what our fear is. What we think we're afraid of is not really what we're afraid of. For example, when I work with clients and they'll say, oh, I'm really afraid that my partner will leave me. Well, what's the problem with that? Of course, we don't want that to happen. What is the problem with that? Well, it must mean that I'm unlovable. Ah, oh, that's the actual fear. The fear that we're not gonna be loved by anybody else. And that that partner leaving is a reflection on our lovability. Sometimes our fears are that we aren't gonna be supported. We're safe. And it's a deep primal fear that often has nothing to do with whatever conflict or arguments or communication we're having within our relationship. We can be talking about hey, I mow the lawn for you and I do all these chores for you and I take the kids everywhere and it just doesn't feel like you appreciate me. And that can lead down to actually a fear that I'm not enough, so no one will love me. We're not aware of that as we're communicating. So these deep needs, these deep fears get hidden under the surface because we don't even know what we're afraid of. So imagine instead that you use some emotional freedom techniques tapping. You take one of my courses, you find out and do some deep exploration. What does it mean about me if? Just keep asking yourself that question. What does it mean if? What does it mean about me if? What does it mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? And go deeper and deeper and deeper. And what most people will find is they'll come down to something such as, I'm worthless, I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough. Something that really challenges who we are as a core and our capacity to survive as mammals and as humans in a relationship. So consider that. So as long as I brought it up, let's just add the quote on the end. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure it is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? 
you are a child of God and playing small does not serve you. It keeps going from there. I don't have the rest of it in front of me though. <laughs> and then you have the Four Noble Truths of Love by Susan Piver. Piver, Piver, not really sure how to pronounce her name. Really great book though. She's got four truths that are really worth exploring within yourself. And her first truth is that relationships are uncomfortable. Different things happen in every single relationship and you must heal your relationship wounds in relationship. Yes, sometimes you're in a relationship and you need to break it off or you get broken up with and it takes a while to come back to yourself, but then you find in your next relationship, you will be healing some of the unhealed wounds of your past relationship because relationship wounds can often only be healed in relationship. This can make them uncomfortable among many other things. Number two, expecting relationships to be comfortable is exactly what makes them uncomfortable. At the root of all of our discomfort is the wish for comfort, right? What's underneath that? What do we want? What are we afraid of? We have this imagination that if we find our soulmate or the right person, everything will be perfect. And I can tell you, it's a lot easier and it's not perfect. There's still challenges. There's still miscommunications. It's how do we move through and move forward and really cultivate love for ourselves and for the other person. Number three, meeting the discomfort together is love. The inability to create safety actually plots the path to love. It seems strange, but really when you work with chaos and joy, love is more than romance. And this is why I tell people in the soulmate courses that I offer, it's not about the immediate chemistry. It's about the depth, the depth of understanding, the depth of connection, that long-term vasopressin oxytocin release. A great partner is one that stands side by side with you, even in the midst of conflict. So you could too can both be like, okay, the conflict is our enemy, not each other. The disagreement is our enemy, not each other. So how do we move through this together? And number four, she talks about the Noble Eightfold Path. I'm not gonna go into that. You can look it up if you wish. It's a lot about intention. What is our intention? What are our actions? What are we doing? What are the choices that we're making? So remember that you are love, you are loving, you are lovable. What does that mean to you? I'd love to hear it in the comments. And until next time, have a lovely afternoon or evening or morning, whatever it is for you.